News reports falsely claim he has been killed in battle. Held in a cell with the dead bodies of his comrades, Che Guevara awaits his fate. 12.30 p.m. on October 9th, CIA agent Felix Rodriguez enters the schoolhouse. He was sitting in the bench. I stood in front of him and said, Commander, I'm sorry, I tried my best. He turned white like a piece of paper. So he composed himself and said, it's better this way. I should have never been captured alive. And I asked him, say, if I can send a message, do you want anything for your family? And then he changed and said, you can't tell my wife to remarry and try to be happy. Chase stood up. He thought that Rodriguez was going to kill him then and there. Felix told me that he then embraced Che uh, as a, a gesture to a kind of noble enemy, said goodbye, left the room. Rodriguez went out and asked for volunteers. Mario Turan, a young sergeant, steps forward. Came to where he was because I knew he was to be executioner and said, look, don't shoot from here up, shoot from here down because he's supposed to die from combat wound. Tehran enters the cell, ready to execute the rebel leader. When he sees Tehran entering the room, he knows that this is the man that's going to kill him. You know when you look into your murderer's eyes. He knows he's about to die. When Tehran came in, he said, shoot, coward, you're only going to kill a man. In other words, you're not going to kill my ideas. Tehran fired several bursts into Che. And the first seemed to hit his arm. Che fell on the ground and bit his hand hard to avoid crying out. And then Tehran finished him off with another burst, something like nine bullets that entered his body. The fatal bullet entered his thorax and he um, asphyxiated on his own blood. Uh, Captain Gary Prado and, Cap and Captain Celso Torrelio came down and we all came into the room. And then Gary Prado said, Mi Capitan, I think we have finished with the guerrilla in Latin America. He wasn't even put in the helicopter. He was just tied to it. I saw it with my very own eyes. He was tied on with a rope. Before the helicopter leaves, a priest steps forward. He gave the last benediction. He's the man who is an atheist, who doesn't believe in God, and he did receive the benediction of the Catholic Church. Che's body is flown to the local hospital in Via Grande. People from miles around come to view the body. One of them is local portrait photographer Rene Kadima. When I went in, there were about 10 soldiers guarding Che. I got on top of the washer to get a good angle kneeled a bit, and took one of the best pictures circulating the world, I'm told. That evening, Felix meets with the top brass of the Bolivian army. One of the generals is concerned people may not believe this is really the body of Che Guevara. And he said, if Fidel Castro denied that this is Che Guevara, we need really a proof of it. And he said, cause his head and put him for Malahide. He said, you are a head of a state, you cannot present the head of a human being as a proof. So he said, Colonel, cut both hands and put in for Malahide. So they cut both hands at this level. Che's hands are sent to Cuba as proof that he is dead. It was the next day when Che's body disappeared. Che's body, along with his dead comrades, have been secretly buried in an undisclosed place. It was a combination decision between the Bolivian president, the CIA, and the generals on the ground there. The idea was to deny Che a burial place where his followers would find him and be able to render tribute to him. October 18th, Fidel announces Che's death to the people of Cuba. When I heard that Che had died, I didn't believe it. I didn't think it was possible. Around the world, people demonstrate in protest against his execution. In death, Che's legend grows. His face has come to be the quintessential icon for youthful defiance of the status quo. Che's burial site remains a mystery for 28 years until author John Lee Anderson uncovers the truth. 
I had an interview with the retired general, Mario Vargas Salinas, and it occurred to me, almost in passing, just to ask him, so, where's Che's body? Which I knew to be a military secret. And much to my shock, he sat back down and said, well, look, I've been wanting to tell, tell you about that. And he told me. The remains of seven bodies are found in Via Grande. And I'll never forget going to this pit and they just told me under their breath, they said, John Lee, that's him. You're aware that you're looking at a crime scene, that an entire state had tried to cover up. And so you feel history just wash over you. And I felt great about revealing that history. Che and the others are finally laid to rest in a tomb in Santa Clara, Cuba, on the 30th anniversary of his death. His beautiful martyrdom helped play out in nurturing and encouraging future generations of revolutionaries in Latin America and elsewhere. Yet Che's only real success as a revolutionary had been in Cuba. The problem is that he failed and none of the things that he wanted to change uh, have been changed yet. Most of the people that had contact with Che Guevara and helping him in any sort of a way really paid the consequences. From the whole group in Bolivia, only three of us survived. Three of us Cubans. I am in part glad that Che did not live to see all the things that are now going on in Cuba. Because he would die of a heart attack, rage and disgust. Benigno now lives in exile in Paris and is considered a traitor in Cuba. Che is still remembered in Bolivia. Its socialist president, Evo Morales, is a critic of the United States. If we had a Che...